Last Saturday, I competed in the 24-hour startup challenge. Now, what this is, is I am given 24 hours to try and build or code a startup. And the whole entire time, you are live streaming on Twitch. So that's what I did last Saturday. And I actually only ended up coding this for 18 hours until I was just super exhausted and gave up. So the live stream is over, but the competition is not. So until the end of the week, um, the competition is not over and people are voting on different projects. So the project that I built is Code Ponder. And if you'd like to support me or the project, you can go to this URL and you can vote for the project. So what's gonna happen is that by the end of the week, whichever project gets the most votes, that is the winner of the competition. And I believe how they're doing it is they have a top 10, first place through 10, and then the cat, the prize is cash. So that's pretty cool. Um, so let's talk more about what I learned from building this. And But before I do, I want to show you what Code Ponder is so you can have some context. So you see the tagline is a marketplace for code reviews. And this is what it looks like. So the idea for this is there's not really a good place that I know of, and correct me if I'm wrong, to post your code to get it reviewed. I don't know of any sites where like, you basically can do, get code reviews on. And so that's what I want to build is a site where uh, a marketplace for code reviews where if someone, I can share my code and get comments on it. And I can also take that to the next level. So let's say someone wants to pay $20 or something. Uh, they can be like, please code review me for $20. And the other person, we can have experts on the site that can go and do that for them. And then basically it's a marketplace. So the expert gets paid for doing that. And then we take a percent in the middle. So basically that was the business idea of how this would make money. Um, and then it would also be free as well as you could just create a free code review um, and give free code reviews as well. And so this is what I ended up building. Um, you'll notice that it is live. You can actually visit it right now if you want to. Um, it's got HTTPS, of course. Can't have a site without it these days. Um, and what this is, is I'll just quickly go over the tech stack because I'm always fascinated what people choose. So on the website, I ended up choosing Next.js to give that a try. So yes, this is server-side rendered. Um, and we are using, uh, what else, React. Of course, I guess we're using Next.js. And we're using GraphQL. We're using TypeScript. And uh, this is connecting or getting the data from PostgreSQL database. We got Node.js on the back end. Um, and I was using Typeform, and uh, the other thing with this is I deployed this to DigitalOcean, and so there is a caddy. Uh, I use caddy as my load balancer or my reverse proxy that sits in front. That's how I got HTTPS, and it's serving requests between the front end um, and also the server, which I think I put did I put it on like prod, I think. Uh, I can't remember what I, what I put it on a different subdomain, I think, or maybe it's like server dot. Um, server.codeponder. Yeah, there we go. So this is my server. Can't get, do a get request to my server. It only has the GraphQL endpoint. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my server uh, and the tech stack for it. Oh, I'm also using Redis for sessions. Uh, and I think that's everything. I might be missing something, but that's, that's the gist of it. Uh, so here is basically all the different code reviews uh, of people that want code reviews. And then you can see I can offer to say, hey, I'll give you a code review. And you can come, there's this little screen over here so I can see all the people that I have offered and whether they approved me to start code reviewing them. Um, and then over here, I can see all the people that have uh, given me offers. And so I can approve them and be like, hey, yeah, you can give me a code review or no, thank you. Um, and so that's kind of the idea is offering back and forth. Now, the other thing is here's you can also request a code review. Um, and then we also have log out, log in, register if you want to create an account and try it. Uh, but basically what, what this is missing is basically some polish and also uh, notifications. And there's a whole lot of other stuff we could add to this. This product has a lot of different directions that could go in. Um, and so that's kind of the idea with it. And so let's get into what I learned. And that is the first thing. I feel like this was a bad idea for this particular uh, challenge. The reason why I say that is I actually really like the idea in general, but I feel like it has too big of a scope um, for this particular uh, challenge. I think I should have picked something way smaller in scope uh, and done it very well uh, and 
do way less things with it. So I think that's the main thing that would have improved things a ton is if I just made a super small project. Um, but with that said, I love the idea behind it. And this is something I'm considering uh, spending more time and actually coding out for real. Uh, the other thing is if I was doing this, I think I would choose some kind of platform to help me go faster. Uh, so whether that be a Firebase or something where it takes care of hosting for me um, and it takes care of building the database and sessions and all that stuff for me uh, just to speed up the development, uh, I don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Now alternatively, if I didn't choose one of these things, the other thing that I would want if I don't choose a Firebase or something like that, it's better uh, boilerplate creation or better bootstrapping. So I that's something I'm going to talk about a little bit more at the end of the video. Um, but something I want to set up for my projects now is kind of some, uh, but two things really. So some libraries that I commonly use. So set up some things like, for example, I kind of want to put my authentication package into its own NPM library that I can just add to any package. Because I basically have a set way that I like to do that. And so kind of abstracting that so I'm not implementing that on every single project. So that's something I want to build and also the idea of kind of bootstrapping CLI of, all right, I'm not starting from scratch every time. This is kind of the way I like to build it now. And so I'm going to have a CLI that bootstarts me um, with all the different tools that I like to use for new projects. So those are things that I kind of want to start setting up. And I think that would help a ton with this sort of project if I chose that route. But even then, I think Firebase is probably the way to go or, you know, pretty much pick a Firebase alternative AppSync, GraphQL, um, or whatever. There's probably a lot more of them now too, um, where it handles that stuff for you. Now, if I didn't go with that, the other problem is I tried to deploy into DigitalOcean and I just tried to do, I get too fancy with my deployments. Uh, I set up Caddy, I tried to set up Redis, PostgreSQL, my website, and the server. So that's five different things. Uh, they're all in a Docker Compose and trying to get them all to play nice with each other. Uh, if you watch, this is the VOD for this is actually on Twitch, and I'm also posting it on my channel. Uh, you'll see when we get to the deployment part, I'm just super tired at that point, and deployment was tough. Um, but I mean, that's my preferred way of deploying it if I'm doing an actual project. But I think a better way to go would have just to throw this thing on Heroku. It would have been a lot easier, um, and we would have been uh, way underway a lot faster and not worry about doing the perfect deployment or like setting up all the stuff myself. I think that was a poor decision. Uh, I think just throwing it up on Heroku would have been much better. Um, and then, so that's, I mean, that's the big thing. So the recap, lower my scope, pick a, a project with less scope. Two, pick something that I can move faster with. So either have some bootstrap, boilerplate, or use Firebase or likes. And then third, uh, pick something easier to deploy to, either Heroku or something like that. And I think I would have a lot more success in the challenge um, or get at least get a more finished product. Uh, and then lastly, what I want to talk about is I, and that was the other thing is with the project, one thing that slowed me down is I was doing stuff multiple times. So I would add stuff to my type arm entity then I need to generate the types for my GraphQL resolvers and I would update my schema. And so all these different places I was touching that I'm, I'm trying a lot of different tools. I'm trying to decide how I want to do this. And I've finally come to something, an idea of how I want to go about doing this one thing. And so I'm going to be trying, I tried out type GraphQL. I'm trying out more to see if this is a tool that can help me. But first, before I explain why this might be a good choice, let me explain to you what I kind of want to, do. Uh, so the idea is what I want to do is have an entity. This is not my entity. Here's my entity that I get, that I have for my type form. And I want this to be something that uh, I also build my GraphQL schema from. Uh, so for example, here's what it looks like when I was just playing around with it earlier today is I'm importing from type GraphQL and I'm importing from type form. And basically what I'm doing is here's my type form entity. You'll notice I have a primary generated columns, but then I also have these other decorators which map to GraphQL fields. Um, and so basically creating your GraphQL schema from TypeScript types uh, or from TypeScript interfaces and objects, but more importantly doing this, or really from classes in this point, but more importantly 
also mapping it with type orm. So that's where I feel like um, some places are not. So basically what I'm, what I'm trying to say is I don't want to take my type orm entity and then rewrite it again to create the inputs and the responses and all the stuff that I need to do for the GraphQL response. I basically want to take that all from the GraphQL or the type orm entity. Um, and so to do that, you can, in type GraphQL, you can set up these base resolvers, which are abstract classes. So basically this would work for any entity, or that's what I'm trying to set up. Is so this is basically a generic create method, or so it'd be like create user or create note or whatever entity you want to pass in. And what's nice about this is it's, can, it can be more than just your CRUD operations. It can be anything you want to abstract out, uh, which is kind of interesting. So I'm playing with this idea. That's something I want to set up. So I'm trying type GraphQL right now, but if that doesn't fit everything I need, I'm either going to set up, uh, look for something else or set up my own project uh, that does this for me. So let me know if you guys have ever experimented with this or if you know of other projects that would be good to check out. Some of the things that I've looked at before type GraphQL is Vesper and then also Nest. Um, but they didn't seem to have the same kind of, even though Vesper looks like it stopped getting uh, development on. It looks like it's like the last commit was like seven months ago or something. So that was a little, uh, that was one reason I didn't want to look at it as much. Type GraphQL seems like it has more active development. And then also, secondly, Vesper is not kind of, I don't think you can do these, this similar thing where from your GraphQL, well, that's my index from my GraphQL, well, not GraphQL, but my type form entity generate uh, kind of the GraphQL fields. And the cool thing about this is I can specify things on this. So for example, this thing is a GraphQL field, but not a field in my database. Password is a field in my database, but not in my GraphQL schema. So I can specify those things with different decorators, whereas nickname is both a GraphQL field and a database field. So that's kind of what I want to set up and kind of reduce the number of places I have to change things in. Uh, so yeah, and then really the last thing I just wanted to uh, mention is whether or not I'm going to be streaming more. And the answer to that is probably, I think I'm going to give it another try. Um, definitely not eight, uh, 18 hours, but uh, I think I'm going to be streaming some development of Code Ponder. I kind of, I'm, Here's like my general thoughts on this, my general plan. Nothing set in stone yet, but my thoughts are I'm probably going to recode this from scratch with whatever I decide to do with type GraphQL or whatever um, with that, uh, and then probably live stream that. Uh, but I haven't totally decided yet, but that's kind of the next thing I'm thinking about doing. Anyway, that's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching.